heard cool. something. I was like, I wonder if Joe knows this. I, totally random, but just like how cool is freaking science? It's pretty See, cool. They measure like the stress levels of whales, and they can use the stress of whales to determine if like the Soviets are t- or the Russians are testing bombs under under the ocean floor. I'm like what the hell? I heard this talk recently. This woman studying whale earwax. So whales don't have ears like ours that stick out. I mean, that would not be good for like swimming around, right? There's a lot of friction. But they have like these vestigial things because they like evolved from wolves. I always thought like stuff came out of the water and that whales evolved into wolves. No, no, no. They think that wolves turned into whales. Really? <laughs> yes. Wolves? Yes. I don't know. This, Jamie has because I am a total ignoramus, but this is a going theory that oh whales evolved from wolves. So like most mammals, they have ears. Those ears have been covered over. And what happens to a whale is that it, it retains earwax. And the ear, there's earwax in the whale. The whale doesn't hear with its ears. It hears through its jawbone, uh, and that reverberates, and that's how it senses sound. But it still has vestigial earwax. They sample the earwax of dead whales, and they can measure how much cortisol, the stress hormone, mm. is in the whale. And they know the migratory patterns of the whale. I just, Science wow. is, and they do some of this research in Antarctica. So anyway. That's really fascinating. I want to understand to. how you can look at all of the variables that are possible in terms of the composition of planets, in terms of temperature, in, in terms of also different kinds of environments for life that we haven't encountered yet but could be real. Different kinds of life. Di- things that are very, very alien to what we perceive of as carbon-based life forms. I just don't understand how you're looking at one planet that has a very different environment than Earth, even though Earth has life and it doesn't, and using that one example to sort of dismiss the possibility that in the insanely vast universe that there couldn't be something that's very similar to the conditions of Earth. Yeah, 100% right. You're 100% right. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying there's, there's, I'm ruling it out. I'm saying there's what's called evidence, prior information. Right. And you should be able to say that how likely it is, like you should be able to run a simulation, say for every time there's a planet that's rotten with life, like the Earth, there's some odds in the overlapping communal history of those two planets in a binary planet system that they should share life. And then you get a number. I'm not saying I know that number, but you should be using that as information to sort of say how, how, what is the fecundity? How likely is it for life to get started? And once it starts going, I believe evolution can take over. But you just keep you know, kind of kept this notion that because the universe is so vast. Mm-hmm. But I, the reason I brought up Antarctica, and I've been there twice, okay? There's four different animals that I've seen in Antarctica, okay? And I, there are these giant seagulls called skuas that will freaking rip your face off if you leave it out. <laughs> you know, they're just nasty birds, okay? There's penguins on the continent itself. And uh, there's seals, and then there's people, okay? So this is one-seventh of the continents of Earth. There's almost no other life on Earth. But imagine you could make the same argument. The Earth is so big, then like wherever there's a continent, there should be life. Like, you don't see cities in Antarctica. You don't see right. pe- other, uh, uh, not even like other people. You don't see like, well, there's still Neanderthals down there. There were dinosaurs there at one point, but I'm saying right now. So just by saying that there's the large number hypothesis is that there's so much possibility that that leads to probability. That's a logical fallacy. Just because there's a large number, there's a, there's a potential. Right. If Earth didn't exist. Right. But Earth does exist, and humans do exist, and, and Earth is rich with life forms. We that, know that it's possible. That's true. And we know that it's possible given the parameters that Earth enjoys. That's, right? what, that's why I say. If and you, we know that there's an insane amount of planets out there right. that could replicate this environment. Right. So wouldn't you then say, again... If you knew that life is, is so incredible, there's these extremophiles that live in volcanic vents 3,000 mm-hmm. meters under the ocean. Um, so, again, you have to say, like, what are the odds that we would not see life on Mars or on Enceladus? And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying there's right, no But it's life. just Mars. It's one example. And it could be that life requires a very narrow window that we enjoy. Sure. That right? may be. But, but look at all the other factors that go into life existence on Earth. We talked about Jupiter before. Mm-hmm. There are scientists that believe that without Jupiter, we wouldn't be here because Jupiter is like a big vacuum cleaner. Right. There are scientists that believe that if the moon wasn't as close as it is, you know, that the moon is mm-hmm. exactly the same angular diameter as the sun from the earth. Do you know what that implies for you? And, and next April 8th, when I come and visit you again, <laughs> there's a total eclipse of the sun. Oh, wow. So I'm going to take you, if you're willing, I'm going yeah, sure. to show you the eclipse. That sounds of the sun. like a lot of fun. Uh, it'll change Where your life. Where would we go? Uh, we're going to go up to San Antonio. 
Oh, nice. We're going to drive. It's easy. Okay. Or a fly. We'll get to it. It's only a 90 minute drive. Yeah, it's not even no. 90 minutes, right? Have you, you ever experienced a total solar eclipse? Minutes? Um, I, I didn't experience it because I, I, I remember, was it Donald Trump that was staring at the sun? <laughs> Wasn't it? It was him. Yeah, it was. It was him. And okay. I was like, I'm not going to be that guy. I think I did try to look at it. Yeah, now that I remember, but it didn't yes. come through here. So a- anyway, no, it was in California. If you were to see it, you would the the experience that you had on Mauna Kea will seem like you know like you're just going down to the to the bar or something. Really, this has changed your life. Okay, I'm in. This will change your Damn life. Damn it, we told everybody we we're going to San Antonio on April eighth. It's going to be a real problem. <laughs> well, we'll find a secret place. A lot Maybe. of freaks. Yeah, exactly. Freaks are going to show up. 